Hi there. Welcome to Hivers. I'm John Stewart. And I'm Amy Stanton. Today, we're taking a look at why Christchurch rocks. Hivers episode one. Christchurch rocks! Not that sort of rock. We're asking the question, why do earthquakes happen in Christchurch? And to do that, we're going to learn a bit about the geology of Christchurch. And New Zealand. Our field reporter Hattie is at the UC Geology Department to take an in-depth look at what happens in depth. Hard talk with Hattie and her purple hat. Hi, I'm Hattie compton Mon, and welcome to Hard Talk with Hattie. I'm here at the University of Canterbury in the Geology Department with Jared Corbin. Hi, thanks for coming, Jared. Hi, Hattie, thanks for having me. Now, first question, what causes earthquakes? Well, to understand earthquakes, first you have to understand about tectonic plates. Plates? No, Hattie, not those sort of plates, tectonic plates. They're massive pieces of rock that are around the surface of the earth, and they move together, and as they move together, sometimes they bump up against each other, and when they push against each other over a long time, it causes stress, and eventually that stress gives way, and that gives us an earthquake. Kind of like when you get angry with your brother, and the stress builds up, and eventually you've just got to yell at him. It's like that. So they just move apart from each other? Yeah, earthquakes can happen in a few different ways. You can have earthquakes when the plates can be meeting sideways like this and have an earthquake going sideways, or you could have an earthquake where the plates are going down and up, so you could have, the earth can be thrown up or it can be running along the side like that. So should Christchurch be worrying about the movement? You can get earthquakes anywhere on Earth, and we do get a lot of earthquakes in New Zealand, but as long as you educate yourself and you're careful, then there's no more reason to be worried than there was before the earthquakes happened in Christchurch anyway. Does anything good come out of earthquakes? Oh, it sure does. I mean, earthquakes basically create our whole landscape. So if you like mountains and you like skiing and you like looking at beautiful areas like we've got in New Zealand, then earthquakes created all of that stuff. That's what's built the Southern Alps. But yeah, slowly this will come up. So eventually, over a long time, you have find this bit of rock way at the top up there. Oh. And that's the people, that's pretty amazing. And that's how mountains are formed. Do you like earthquakes? That's a big question. I really like learning about them and I was pretty scared when I was in them in Christchurch. Um, but yeah, I, I really like them. I actually, I like what they do. They're a pretty amazing force of nature. Do you like earthquakes? Uh, it depends. My little brother really likes them. Oh wow, he should be a geologist. I'm not a big fan. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Bit scary. They can be, but you can learn a lot from earthquakes. Thank you for coming and speaking to us about earthquakes, Jared. It's been really great. Thanks, Hattie. Thanks very much for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Back to you in the studio. Now we know what happened under Christchurch. Let's take a look at what's happening above the ground. Mikhail Gartner is an earthquake and seismic engineer working with CIRA to make our city safer. We went with him to take a look at how the city is being better engineered for tomorrow. It's time to talk to people in Talking to People with Hannah. Hi, I'm Hannah and I'm here with Mikhail Gartner from CIRA. So Mikhail, tell us a bit more about your job. Well, I'm a structural engineer that provides advice to CIRA for demolitions of CBD buildings as well as structures in the Port Hills. So what do you like most about your job? I like finding solutions. Mm -hmm. Solutions to problems and getting people a new structure, for example, that can resist disasters. I heard you were part of the search and rescue team after the earthquakes, is that true? That's, that's absolutely true. Yeah, so I came with a, an urban search and rescue team to come help out and rescue as many people as we could from collapsed structures. Were you scared? Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> scared especially with all the aftershocks coming through and all the damaged buildings that were around us. But ultimately, we needed to uh, rescue people, so we had to take some risks. So what kind of new building technology is being used in the buildings here? There's a ver Once again, there's a variety of options for engineers to pick from. Um, you have everything from what we call base isolation, which is like standing on a skateboard and letting the earth rock below you, to um, braces that actually 
kind of yield, they're kind of elastic, and then become like stretch and dissipate energy. You have things called dampers. That's like shocks on your cars, essentially, as well. And then you have some special stuff coming out of UC Canterbury, some special connections in steel structures that is being used as well. And it's also about our ground. So we have all sorts of technology we don't see that's underground to help stabilize the foundations of our structures. Do you like your job? Absolutely. I absolutely love my job. I love it because we can make a difference by designing for disaster reduction, essentially. We can design buildings to resist certain events like earthquakes or floods or big wind storms or even big snowstorms. And we make a difference by making our environment safer. It's not just new buildings being made safer, it's old buildings too. I'm here with Andre Lovett, who's the CEO of the Art Centre. So Andre, what's your job? So I'm the CEO of the Art Centre and what I'm responsible for is the restoration of this whole place. We've got 23 buildings here that we're trying to fix up and repair following the earthquakes. Um, there were two parts of the site that completely collapsed. One was the tower in the Boys High building just behind us and the other one is the, the observatory tower in the South Quad and those were parts of the buildings that fell completely onto the ground. It's really hard to make these buildings strong but we're getting on with it and we've got techniques and methods to make them strong again and that's what we'll do. So Andre, what do kids here have to look forward to in the future? Well, um, one of the things that we're going to try and do is have a whole lot of education and artistic things for kids to do. So what will kids like me be able to do in here? It's good that you asked that question. Um, we will be running a uh, education program which will involve lots of mask work, working with puppets, we do lots of physical theatre. Yeah, have fun and, and uh, create things. You can see it like that, mm -hmm. all lit up so it looks beautiful. And then with the canopy outside, it's a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. New and old, all combined together. We're going to have music and we're going to have performance art in addition to the fudge cottage and, and buying sweets and, and, and Christmas presents for your family. You'll be able to come along and enjoy those sorts of things as well. Well, that's all from me. Looks like the new art centre is going to be a great place for both kids and adults. Back to you guys in the studio. So there we have it. Why Christchurch rocks and why it's going to rock a lot more in the future. So remember, look after your plates and we'll see you next time on Hivers. The things about those things, man. Well, yeah, the things. Thanks for watching Hivers. Coming up next episode, the future is now.